Hello friends, we are basically talking about the essentials of palliative care and this is the first week of our course that is basic certificate in palliative care. So far we have seen, we spoke about what is palliative care, symptom management, pain management as well as what is the importance of community participation in palliative care and now we are coming to the very important part and that is called importance of communication skills in palliative care. We all know without communication we just cannot survive and particularly in matters of palliative care when we want to reduce the pain, we want to improve the quality of life of the patients, we want to heal their sicknesses, we want to be with them throughout their end of life, a very gentle, effective communication skill is required and that is what we are going to speak about in next two lectures. Why communication is important in medical field? In fact, it is important everywhere in our social circle, in our work life, in society also, anywhere, you know. Uh, I'll just tell you, I'll narrate a story. Uh, way back in early 1980s, I was to go to Gwalior. I came to Delhi. My train for Gwalior was in the evening and I had lots of luggage with a bedroll also. So I went to the luggage room. But he was returning some of the luggages which were not locked properly and my bedroll as it is, you know, it just contains beds and few other things, it was not locked. I was confused because I had almost about 7-8 hours in Delhi, I just wanted to go out and see a little bit of sightseeing. Still I went, I put up my luggage over there and I lo looked at the name table of that person who was the in charge of luggage room, I saw his name, Vijay Kumar. Immediately I went and spoke to him, Vijay, this is the problem, I am captain so and so. I got about 6-7 hours, I want to put my luggage here, but I know that my bedroll is not locked, what should I do, tell me. When I took his name, I was so happy because what is most important to you? What is most important to any person, not money, not food, nothing else, it is your own name and some stranger taking your name, you immediately feel connected with that stranger. He said, sir, there is no problem. As it is, I know there is nothing in the bed holder, just keep your luggage. I kept my luggage, there was no lock over there and I went out and had my good time. This is the effect of good communication in any circle for that matter. Why does a patient come to the doctor? Nobody wants to visit couple of things in our life. Nobody wants to go to the police station. Anybody wants to go? No. Nobody wants to visit a lawyer. Nobody wants to visit a doctor. Why, why should you go to a doctor? Because you don't want to fall sick. But people do come to doctor because they are sick and they think that the doctor will correctly treat each case, he will get normal. In fact, in our society, doctors are being treated as God, next to God. But actually what happens in our society, that doctors do not know how to communicate with the patient. In this particular slide, you just see what happens, doctor is in a very high position. at high level, well educated, big bungalow, lots of money, whereas a patient is a poor person, he does not have anything. So, he remains crushed behind, underneath this elephant, you know. And therefore, this elephant, this doctor, the medical professionals need to treat very politely with the patient, so that he gets, he communicates properly, effectively with you. Communication is the most important part, 
because the complete medical process starts with diagnosis, starts with history, medical history and then diagnosis. Medical history will be okay, everything will be okay and medical history comes only when there is a proper communication between the patient and the doctor. This is what happens, doctors at public hospital, in general hospital, government hospitals, they don't talk nicely because they get, they keep getting paid whatever they want to do. But doctors at private hospital, that total salary, everything depends upon their behavior with the patient. If they do not admit the patient, number of patients, they will not get their salaries. I suggest that everywhere we must have some honey in our tongue so that whenever we talk to anybody and particularly to the patients, we must make use of honeyed, sweet language. Communication problems in palliative care, there are a number of them. Palliative care, breaking bad news, whenever you patients come with very, very I mean to say those sort of problems where their life is in danger, they may be suffering from cancer or any other case. And when you have to break the bad news that the cancer is there, it is widespread and it is in stage 3, stage 4, that is where you are supposed to be very, very generous to him. And we have got a protocol called spikes, breaking bad news. Denial at times a patient whenever you just tell him that this is what you are suffering at he immediately says no I can't have it I am a very healthy man. Denial is a defense mechanism do not worry but by persuasion you are supposed to break that denial. Okay, no my dear friend this is the reason these are the laboratory tests maybe you are healthy but now you are not. Collision also happens. It can be between two professionals, it can be with a, with a medical professional and a relative also. They don't want to tell the real thing, real diagnosis to the patient because they think that the patient comes to know about this diagnosis, he might get a heart attack, he might not survive. No, it is not that. It is the duty of the patient to know what is really happening to him. We just cannot conceal that particular thing from him. Let him take the decision about his treatment. Collision needs to be broken. It can take place, but in a day or two, it should be told to the patient the real situation. Difficult questions will be asked. When you tell a bad news to a patient, okay, you just see you are in stage 4 of cancer and very few days are there. You may not be able to survive. So naturally, a patient will cry and the first question will be, Doctor, how many days I have? How many days I am going to survive? Very difficult question. Doctor, yes, doctor knows how to treat and other things, but doctor is not a god. He cannot tell you when this particular patient is going to die. Very difficult to answer. Emotional reaction, anger. Sometimes patient gets angry. At that time, you a doctor cannot get angry. Doctor must ask the patient, must allow him to release his anger, let him say whatever he wants to, let him come down that pressure to be released, bereavement, grief. See, there are so many problems in palliative care where until and unless you have proper communication, things cannot be sorted out properly. These are the contents, but before that I just want to tell you a few things about communication in general. Communication has got a certain objective and communication has got number of parts. First is communication has a message. A message goes from a sender to the receiver. So there are two parties, sender and receiver. Now this message goes through a media, it can be orally, it can be through a telephone, it can be in writing you just give a note or you just write a letter or anything. So there is a media. Third important thing, each and every message had certain things to be done with reaction. 
certain things to be implemented up, implemented upon and therefore the receiver of that message must understand that ki what to act upon once he acts upon the message a feedback is being given after the feedback again the sender says ki yes sender may give certain corrections so it has got so many parts sender receiver medium language action feedback and correction all these things to be done communication is just not talking it just one part of the communication communication is just not writing it is again one part of communication there are two in broad category we can say there are two types of communication verbal communication in which a particular language is used in verbal it can be oral or it can be written and non verbal language non verbal communication it is the most important communication in fact most of the communication almost more than 90% communication takes place in non verbal communication like eye contact facial gestures your body movements your smile so many things are like this all this presentation <coughs> audio visual presentation that's again a part of non verbal communication communication can be upward from nurse to a doctor it can be downward from doctor to the nurse or from nurse to the patient communication can be lateral from one doctor to another doctor from one nurse to another nurse and for each type of communication you need to understand the nitty gritty of that communication that how it is to be done conveyed if you want proper action to be taken on that communication on that message we'll take uh, this lecture into two parts part 1 and part 2 and then thereafter we'll talk about uh, six points toolkits and certain communication protocols time out think over what is palliation what is symptom management this has been already taught to you by dr geeta joshi just think over what it is and describe this to at the discuss along with your friend types of communication verbal non verbal verbal conscious use of spoken or written word all this thing you know if you use abuses you get back abuses just a simple word by madam sonia gandhi that pm modi maut ka saudagar hai what happened congress lost the state of gujarat whenever you speak just see what sort of words you are speaking and whenever you are writing just see what the effect that particular word is going to carry about on the part of receiver choice of words can reflect age yes education development level culture i may talk i may talk may make use of any word with my friends but when i talk to my elderly people i can't i have to be respectful feelings can be expressed through tone pace etc should be simple brief clear well timed relevant adaptable and credible communication should be always relevant otherwise it is called bakwas it doesn't have any meaning at all you are just wasting your energy non verbal use of gestures less conscious than verbal requires systematic observation and valid interpretation and all those things we are doing we actually do, we do not know that we are nicketing through non verbal communication eyes eye contact postures speech pay of voice and touch so many things are there in non verbal communication now come to palliative care the focus is on the person with the disease that the focus is on the patient rather than that we are not worrying about the disease at itself because once he has come here the disease may not be curable 
but what we want to do that whatever days are left with him we want to really we mean that he enjoys his life he dies with dignity and therefore communication is very important in palliative care two things are there palliative care we treat not only patient but patient plus family as one unit of care so whenever we talk we don't talk only to the patient we talk to the family members also we talk to the caregivers also so they all remain on the same plane we want to make patient happy and if patient dies we want to make family also happy and therefore this is the only medical stream of modern medicine which looks after a patient even after his death and therefore we have got special chapters on grief and bereavement recognizing psychological and spiritual needs definition in the beginning i was telling you but this is the actual definition transmission of information thoughts and feelings so that they are satisfactorily received or understood and another thing which is left out is acted upon any message if it it, it, it doesn't require any action over it it is not a message it is just a gupchup we are just talking you know but the communication needs certain action on it here the first sentence is very important we generally think what is there in the communication i mean so we are speaking since we are one year of age you know ek saal se humne bolna shuru kiya hai but that's not the many and why why do we why talking about communication in medical therapies in medicine what we require is the medicine why communication my dear friends communication is also part of therapy and particularly in palliative care if you speak nicer words if you create sympathy for the patient if you empathize with the patient and the natural heal moral will go off about this therapy part i am just again i, I want to tell you in uh, 2015 or 16 i had gone to dehradun and had swine flu severe fever from dehradun i just came down to amdavad got admitted in hospital and i was semi conscious in fact mujhe koi bhant nahi tha there after i was transferred to a cardiac hospital they admitted me gujarat government had opened a separate ward swine flu was in a full swing at that time you know so they had to open in major hospitals they had opened different departments different wards specially for the swine flu patients i was admitted i was lying down my bed and then a doctor suddenly comes later on i came to new dr parthi he just came nearer to my bed he took my hand in his hand and he just said ki sir you are in safe hands just this simple sentence when he said ki you are in safe hand raised my morale you know ki yes now here is a doctor who says he can look after me nice words generally we put ourselves in the hands of god that is what we say whenever you go to temple mosque or church anywhere we put ourselves we surrender to the god that almighty similarly here also he just you came to my temple now you are safe so it is an act of therapy it gives inner courage to fight against that particular disease and sometimes it is the only constituent when there is no medicine available this is what is going to work good words hope and therefore communication is one of the biggest therapy which we generally do not use in our medical field in communication we are always polite we do not make use of hammer we do not create noises we do not shout we do not yell this is a typical scene
what is the need to communicate and what if we fail to communicate? Both ways, a patient must convey what he is feeling about his body, what is wrong with his body. Because doctor is not a god, a patient must convey that this is the happening. In fact, the complete case history is being written by the doctor on the basis of what patient says about his condition. If he says everything clearly, then at least it reduces the anxiety of the patient. Mutual exchange of ideas and feelings, proper guidance and better compliance, involvement of the family. Sometimes if the patient is hiding certain truth, let uh, the family gets involved, wife or brother or father or anybody. Reduces isolation and acceptance on trust. This is the need of communication in patient-doctor relationship. If we fail, this is what happens. If no communication, no proper case history and therefore doctor cannot diagnose, diagnose the disease properly. Poor symptom control, improper adjustment, then doctor writes some other prescription and it will not help the patient. Poor compliance and lack of cooperation. If doctor does not insist about his prescription and ask the patient to take this medicine regularly, religiously and if he does not take it, nothing is going to happen. Then worsening distress, the tension will increase, there will be a conflict between patient and the doctor. That mutual trust which was developed earlier during the time of first dialogue will be shattered and then finally what will happen there will be a battle, medical legal battle between the patient and the doctor. Therefore my dear friends communication, better communication and this is what happens in our society also. What do the people fight, what do the neighbors fight and then finally they go to the court. Because they do not talk to each other, they do not resolve their problems properly. Uh, this is what happens in medical field, medical legal problems. Consequences of poor communication, shock, emotional numbness, denial, anger, anxiety, depression and guilt. Communication is art or science also, it is an art because You need to understand it, need to learn it. Science because it has a proper syntax. There are certain rules of communication. We call them protocol and those protocols need to be observed. You may not, it is better that if you observe those protocols in social circles at your work life, but in medical circles you must observe those standard rules that will come in the next lecture. It is art also. Art because communication, good communication, empathetic communication comes from your heart. Science because it can be learned, it can be taught to others, that is what I am doing it here. It is art and science and you should develop both the streams. Goals to reduce uncertainty, enhance relationship. Relationship se kya hoga ki when you enhance the relationship between patient and doctor, some sort of trust is being created and that trust you know uh, bring that feeling that something nice is going to happen in patient's mind. Yes, this trust, this doctor is trustworthy, he will heal me, he will cure my disease and again personal satisfaction, communication is a part of our discipline. If you communicate well, people will say yes, he is a good chap. He has got good personality, but if we can't speak anything, we can't speak about ourselves also. Hum usko gunga bolte, dumb, deaf. He doesn't have any personality. It is socially important and particularly for a doctor and when you are sick, even for a patient also communication, good communication, effective communication is very important.
speaking, we will come to that. Principles of good communication, it should be clear, it must have only one meaning, complete whatever the message you give, it should be complete, concise, Don't, you should not be very verbose, comprehensive, constructive, no criticism at all, correct and courteous, polite, very gentle. There is no place of anger in the communication, certain other points are there. Communication between doctor and patient or anywhere for that matter, it cannot be taken, it cannot take place in the corridors or in the gardens, it needs to be taken place in the doctor's chamber, both of them sitting comfortably so that they pass necessary information to each other. Assertive communication by doctor or even by a patient is not necessary at all, you should not be assertive, you should be very polite and you must be requestful ki what can be done about his condition. Proper communication protocols to be observed everywhere in the health professional teams as well as from the patient side. Active listening is very important part of communication because patient may talk anything, but doctor is just not listening at all. Every time when patient wants to say something, he is just interrupting him. In active listening, no interruption is required. Whenever patient is speaking, give him full time. Then only he will be able to tell his story. Case history is his story, it is the story of the patient and therefore, no interruption is warranted. Lastly. Let me tell you my dear friends, most of the medical legal problems arise because of poor communication, because it does not create trust between patient and doctor. And similar in society also, most of our legal problems fight and everything takes place. Why? Because we are too verbose, we abuse each other, we do not respect each other. That is one of the cause, our tongue. Tongue has got two evils. Tongue is the cause of most of our diseases including obesity. As per the orders of your tongue, if you start eating, you will fall sick. And as per the orders of your tongue, if you start abusing the people, again you will have a very unhappy life, social life. Doctor patient communication. We are talking about communication, but there are certain difficulties. Difficulties for the doctors also and difficulties for the patient also. Let us see it. Professionals, they do not want to upset the patient. Sometimes most of the pro professional doctors do not have the knowledge. In fact, you will be surprised because uh, we are not teaching anything about communication or ethics or anything you know to the doctors, they may, they may have almost more than four and a half years of medical training, but such things are not being taught to them. It is very important. Now of course, we have started some ATCOM foundation course in which ethics, attitude, communication skills, hope, empathy, compassion, everything is being taught to them. Uh, doctor always thinks that uh, he does not know, he do, uh, most of the doctors, even we do know, we never say, if somebody asks something, I feel ashamed, you know, okay, I, 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 I do not want to say I do not know. If I say I do not want to, means I feel little inferior. Similarly, doctors also, they feel I do not know, otherwise, you see it is better on the part of doctor that when he knows, he does not know a think about particular condition of the patient, you can always say, oh, I do not I don't know about this, but I will refer it to my friend, you know, something like that. Sometimes doctors, professionals are very busy, do not have the time and this is what is happening. Earlier, I, when as a child, I used to go to a doctor in my village, they used to, spend, they had all the time of the world. They used to spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes talking to a child, you know. They used to carry out physical examination. 
now doctor does not touch the patient at all whatever patient says he immediately just writes down the prescription and off he goes in 3 minutes 4 minutes of time because he has to he has to uh, inspect so many patients many people say come they are waiting outside they want to consult him and again his uh, income generation depends on number of patients so he doesn't want to waste more time the language and dialect difficulties for uh, patient he sometimes is uneducated he doesn't have time he requires privacy and at times patients are afraid of the truth because he, they also know sometimes ki mujhe kuch hua hai something has happened which is very grave and my life is in danger so they don't want to come out that particular fact from their own mouth the mad speech they don't understand the medical language now come to the barriers there are certain barriers between the patient and doctor i just showed you initially that picture of elephant you know that is the biggest barrier doctor and patient they are at different strata their social levels are different their educational levels are different and therefore their thinking doesn't match with each other here it is the time that patient goes up little and the doctor comes down at a particular level so that they can talk to each other noise noise i mean to say whenever you talk to somebody it requires like now we are recording it here our lectures there is no noise at all because if something else happen doors open up somebody's mobile rings up that is called noise if that comes in that the recording is not proper similarly in communication between patient and doctor you must consider that there is no external noise during the communication effective communication genuineness love and compassion and empathy let's uh, see about this what is empathy i said empathy and compassion at the lowest level you got apathy a little higher the second step you got sympathy then empathy and then compassion apathy is at the lowest level apathy means you don't like a particular person you just neglect him you are just going on the road and all of a sudden some accident takes place some scooter is motorcycle skids falls down you are you are not bothered otherwise normally what will happen as a gentleman you will just stop your vehicle there you will go down wo jo gir gaya hai wo bande ko aap utha uthayenge khada karenge scooter ko khada karenge but no let him bloody die why is he going driving over speed you know let him suffer his consequences that is called apathy gruna tiraskar that is not human that's inhuman because the same condition you also might fall in sometimes sympathy apathy lack of interest without feeling you don't have any feeling at all sympathy means you can understand what the person is feeling you are generally with him he is he is not well and it's not good so i must meet him few days back uh, our prime minister narendra modi went to gujarat and i think in april or may the son of gujarat chief minister mr bhupender patel he had brain stroke or something and then he is very sick so prime minister modi visited his house and just spoke to this patient that is called sympathy empathy you know he doesn't have any relation at all but the prime minister he just he went over there met one of the relatives of the chief minister who is sick sympathy that you are just feeling that way 
but empathy not only feeling you all you also want to act upon it how can you help i give you that example of the accident scooter is skidding you happen to go by you also put your scooter on the side of the road and you go and just lift his hand and aap usko khada kar dete and then you go that is sympathy empathy comes in not only that you will raise you will take his hand you will raise him up you will take take his address you will call on the mobile if required you will call 108 ambulance you will send him to the hospital and you might go to the hospital along with this accidental pa- person till his relatives come and join him you know empathy is at a much higher level than sympathy where you also get connected with those happenings compassion is karuna sympathy empathy can be one or two people maybe for a one group but compassion is at all level like nature or the god they are compassionate in so a doctor can be compassionate if he happens to treat all his patients equally with empathy this is sympathy this is empathy you are trying that elderly person how to do that particular exercises to strengthen the finger muscles and joints pt pt i am sorry for you and uh, it's okay normally daya kisi bhi mat khao never i think everybody is uh, god's children you know and therefore we should not take pity on anybody we may help but never feel sorry for anybody because whatever happens it happens karma ke phal hai compassion this is the compassion very good diagram apathy is in the outer circle he is not uh, that person is getting drawn he is not bothered at all he is looking the other way sympathy guy he just you know extending both his hands doesn't want to do anything but the chap with apathy just jump into the pond and moves forward to pull him out in sentence form sympathy oh poor you you just help him empathy i understand what you are feeling i have been there i knew it in compassion i am motivated to help you let's fix this how to show empathy be aware of another person's feelings by showing concern when something bad happens to somebody you show the concern like i just give the example of our prime minister modi he went over there to the chief minister's house show concern show sensitivity by looking at their facial expression ask questions to understand feelings ki yes how are you what is happening to you how are you how do you feel how can i help you give a simple sign of affection such as hug or a tender touch this is what we do normally a mother does the same thing and 100 times she does it when a child goes out plays around here or there quarrels with somebody or to falls down somewhere gets hurt comes crying home what what a mother does just picks up the child hugs the child wipes out the tears smiles at him this is what it is empathy compassion and this is what we need to particularly a patient needs that empathy i said earlier that good communication effective communication is a part of therapy it's a part of medicine which you can give it orally through your tongue listening we are just uh, seeing another thing this is the behavior which in normal communication you must avoid we should not judge anybody 
and normally we do it is like this only you know he already gets angry every time he drinks so much he doesn't do any work you know this is we judge the people we criticize them sometimes we lecture about it we keep on advising we interrupt his actions we must avoid all these things you know it doesn't create good relationship hope plays an important answer hope is eternal and one should never lose a hope and particularly doctor and nurse must keep the hope that the patient will get okay even if they felt medically that the patient may not be able to survive but this need not to be conveyed so blatantly you know there are ways and means yes very few days are there but still miracles can happen jadu ho sakta hai sometimes people do survive they come back from the mouth of death but hope hope is the answer thank you friends